Hello, welcome to another module of this course, Microwave Integrated Circuits. In the previous module, we had discussed about narrow band filters and I said that because of the special properties of distributed elements like shorted transmission lines, uh, it is actually easier to realize a resonator as compared to uh, lumped equivalence of or equivalence of lumped elements like L and C. Uh, then we also showed some improvements in the design of such uh, resonators using gap coupled techniques and then we discussed how using those elements we can uh, design band pass and band stop filters. In this module, I will be introducing to another class of uh, narrow band filters uh, called constant K and uh, M derived filters. Now, these filters uh, belong to a class of filters known as image impedance, image filters. So, let us uh, discuss these filters in detail. Now, first thing that I want to state about these filters is that nowadays not many of the filters that are designed are designed as image filters but they had a special place in the in olden days uh, when synthesis methods were not that developed. So, what these methods rely on is having identical sections of similar elements in cascade and the rule of th rule is that the more the number of sections you have the better the performance of the filter will be. So, the basic cons basic fundamental unit of these filters is a unit cell and two parameters characterize these uh, cells. One is what is known as the image impedance and the other is known as the propagation constant. So, let us discuss what are these unit cells. So, in image filters as I said that we can have two different types of image filters. One is known as the constant K and the other is known as the M derived. Now, let us see what is this constant K uh, filter. Before discussing this, uh, this type of filter, let me a slight diversion and let us try to establish what is this concept of image impedance. So, suppose you have a two port network represented by its A, B, C, D matrix, then the image impedance is defined as that impedance which when connected to any port. So, suppose I connect an impedance Z i 1 here and this is impedance Z i 2 then Z i 1 is said to be the image impedance at port 1 if the input impedance at port 1 is also Z i 1 and Z i 2 is said to be the image impedance at port 2 if the input impedance at port 2 is also Z i 2. Now, suppose uh, this is the uh, this is say the voltage and at V 1 is the voltage at port 1 and V 2 is the voltage at port 2, I 1 is the current at port 1 and I 2 is the current at port 2. Then it can be shown that Z I 1 is equal to A B upon C D which is equal to Y 1 1. Now, so this is the concept of image impedance. Now, coming back to the same network once again.
suppose the two ports are terminated by their image impedances then uh, we can have a relationship between this voltage at port 2 upon voltage upon port 1 like this. Now, what is this ratio V2 upon V1 or I2 upon I1? Now, if we go back to the to a transmission line equivalent, recall there we had seen suppose V1 plus and V1 minus and V2 plus and V2 minus. Now, we had seen that V 2 plus is equal to V 1 plus E raised to minus gamma L. So, it is like this ratio V 2 plus upon V 1 plus is equal to minus gamma L. Now, applying the same logic, if we find this ratio V 2 upon V 1, and equate it to this term E raised to minus gamma, then this is called this is equivalent to a propagation constant. Of course, the only there is a difference here this ratio does not depend on any length, whereas for a transmission line as we saw there is a gamma L term, here there is just a minus gamma term. Also, this is the ratio of the absolute voltages not the incident or the reflected waves, but still this V 2 upon V 1 gives can be termed as the propagation constant and uh, the proper value of this propagation constant depends on whether gamma is real or imaginary and determines whether the wave will be attenuated or fast. So, if gamma is purely imaginary, then there is no loss, the wave will be fast. If gamma has some real term which shows attenuation, then in may then over that particular frequency there will be attenuation. So, this is the principle depending on what this value of the propagation constant is, we can define the pass band or the stop band of the filter. So, based on this now, let us come back to the constant k filter term that I mentioned, but did not explain in full. Uh, the constant k filter has an unit cell which is given like this. Now, the image impedances since this is a symmetrical circuit, the image impedances will be the same at all the ports, they are given like this. And the propagation constant is given like this, now the derivations for these terms are given in the book by Pozart as mentioned in the syllabus for this course. If you wish you can go through them. Now, suppose if Z 1 is equal to omega L and Z 2 is equal to 1 upon omega C, then omega C this term is given by this relation 2 upon L C and this R 0 term is given by square root of L c, I should have read j.
Now taking this further, uh, what we see is that for a certain frequencies, say when omega is lesser than omega c, uh, this propagation constant, the magnitude square is given by and this is always 1 because when omega is lesser than omega c, gamma is purely real and if gamma is purely real, then the magnitude square will always be 1. So, in other words, for omega lesser than omega c, there is no attenuation and it corresponds to the pass band of the filter. Now, for omega greater than omega c, gamma is real and hence e to the power minus gamma is real and negative and this corresponds to stop band. So, then if we plot the alpha and beta or the gamma that is if I represent gamma as alpha plus j beta and if I plot these individual alphas and betas then and suppose this is omega c then beta will be like this and alpha will be like this. As you can see alpha is 0 in the pass band, alpha always represents the attenuation, hence this is the pass band for omega lesser than omega c whereas beta increases from 0 to pi over the pass band and then at omega c it remains at pi and remains constant after. Uh, but note from this graph itself the pro problem is that for a single unit cell the attenuation is quite low in the stop band. Of course, when you have a large number of such unit cells in cascade with each other then this alpha the characteristics will go on changing like this and say for an infinite number of stages we will get an ideal filter which is a perfect square waveform. But since such a large number of uh, filters are not possible and, uh, and also there is this in addition to this low uh, in addition to this low attenuation in the stop band there is also the problem of non constant image impedance. Now, you can imagine these image impedance and propagation constant are just like in a transmission line we have two parameters one is z0 and gamma which completely define a characteristic impedance. For this image filter also the image impedance and the propagation constant they completely define the unit cell and we have seen that for matching purposes a transmission line needs to be connected to an impedance z0. Similarly, for matching purposes an unit cell or the entire image filter needs to be connected to the image impedance. Now, if the see the way it goes is that the image impedances for the unit cells are what it should be seen or its input and output for each unit cell. As for since the structure is symmetric, the image impedances will be the same on the input and output port and so if we want to just cascade a large number of unit cells then it is very easily possible since the image impedance at the input and output are constant. But uh, at the so between each and each unit cell it is not a problem because they are they have the same input and output image impedance and they can be easily matched. If it varies, if the image impedance varies with frequency, then it will vary for all the units. 
but at the input and output of the entire chain of unit cells there that there might be a problem because we prefer usually a constant real input and output impedance whereas this image impedance keeps varying with frequency it might be imaginary it might be real or it might be complex so to so these are the two problems associated with the constant k filters to get over this problem somewhat uh, there is another type of image filters called M derived filters. So, M derived filters are a variation, their structure is somewhat like this. So, this is the structure, the slight variation instead of Z1 upon 2, we now have Mz1 upon 2 and what used to be Z2 is now actually a combination of an inductor and a capacitor. Now, now this is the basic structure of a, of a or the basic construction of a M derived filter. Uh, if we plot the attenuation of this filter, the derivations are again uh, given in the book by Posa. Uh, I will just directly plot the attenuation graphs to give you a better idea. So, here suppose I plot alpha with frequency, then the structure, then the characteristics that I will get is something like this. Omega c remains the uh, remains the cutoff frequency, just like in the constant k filter case. Uh, but now you see that the attenuation is much higher in the stop band. So till omega c alpha is equal to zero, but then beyond omega c, the attenuation increases rapidly. There is a frequency called omega infinity where alpha is infinity. And beyond omega infinity, you see that alpha value decreases gradually. So, again this is a problem of the M derived filter as well, whereas just between omega c and omega infinity the attenuation is quite high, beyond omega infinity the however the attenuation is not that high. On the other hand for the constant k filter beyond omega c for large for frequencies which are far away from omega c there the attenuation is quite high because for a constant k filter that characteristics was alpha for alpha was like this. So, for these high frequencies the value of alpha was high. So, usually also also one more thing I would like to mention for these M derived filters is that the, the problem of image impedance is not solved entirely. So, what is done usually uh, a combination of an uh, of this M derived filter and constant K filter is often done. And actually uh, if we do that for example, say let me take the red pen, say this is the characteristics have the red pen. Suppose this is the characteristics of the constant K. and this is the characteristics of the M derived. Then a composite filter will have a characteristics something like between this. This dotted line represents the comp composite characteristics of a kind of constant K in cascade with a M derived. Also, 
to solve uh, the problem of the image impedance not being constant with frequency, uh, if we can derive the pi equivalent of this m derived filter which will be something like this. and the same is repeated here as well. It can be shown that when m is chosen as 0.6 z i pi that is the image impedance of this pi equivalent will be nearly equal to z 1 upon z 2 which is equal to L upon C. the L upon C square root. So, here for this particular value of m, the value of this uh, image impedance remains somewhat constant. So, in summary, uh, we saw the a particular class of filters called uh, image, image filters. Now, depending on how many stages you of the of the unit cells that you use, uh, that depends on whether it is a broadband or a narrowband filter. So, a clear classification like we had said between narrowband and broadband filters cannot exactly be made for this image filter, but uh, the concept is interesting because it is just like a transmission line where we have a large, if we have a large number of sections, then we can design a certain attenuation in the stop band and a certain cut off frequency. However, uh, with the present day uh, in present days where we have uh, advanced techniques for synthesizing our desired filter response, uh, these filters are not that common. So, in the next module we will be studying about synthesizing filters uh, or as we said the broadband filters. Thank you.